Welcome back to CBTV 17. I'm Zach Harper Blunt, joined in studio by Council Bus Police Chief Tim Carmody. Chief, thank you for joining us here in the studio today. Zach, thanks for having us today. I appreciate it. Coming up next month, May 3rd, is a special election for a bond issue for a possible new police station. And going back, when was it figured out that a new station is needed? This project's been in progress for roughly 20 years now. Um, the three previous chiefs, to me, had worked on this and hadn't been able to get it to this level. And we've just carried it further through the support of uh, the mayor's office and, and council members and, and are to this point now. When was it that the current facility began use? Well, uh, the building was built in 1977. Uh, it was designed so that the sheriff's office and the police department would be together in the courthouse with a bunch, with most of the other uh, county facilities. And then um, several years later, 1999, the sheriff's office actually moved out and moved into their new facility. So we took over the 7,000 square feet that they had at that time, and it, that expanded our area to 19,000 square feet. And then once you hit your limit, when, how quick was it that planning started for this project? Um, that's a good question. When I arrived in September of 14, one of the first things I noticed was the very cramped conditions that uh, there were things that we truly needed to work on. And, and when speaking to the officers and to the members of the council and, and uh, the mayor, that was one of the biggest priorities is we need a new station. And then for the project, you've got a study group put together with a consulting firm from Omaha. And then also you had community members here from Council Bluffs. What was the decision to have those community members? It was a critical component to us, Zach. Um, it was really important to have uh, feedback and a grassroots effort. We wanted to hear what the citizens thought about this project and wanted their input on how it should come together, how big the facility should be, what kind of fit and finish it should have. Uh, where it's located, all those things are important to us, and we tried to listen to the citizens to make those decisions. And when you had those sites selected, those that was a very crucial element of having that local effort. But before you had the site selected, you actually went out to different police stations that are kind of more up-to-date and toured them. What were some of the things you took from them? Um, I've toured stations in Ankeny, um, other stations around the metro, and then when we partnered with uh, Hafer Wysocki and JEO from Omaha, um, Hafer Wysocki is noted because of the number of facilities they've successfully completed in the Kansas City Metro. They've done approximately 10 facilities, I think, in the last 10 or 12 years. So we had a wide selection to choose from that were in the, in the ballpark of what we're looking at as far as price range and quality, uh, size of the building. And what that helped us do is it showed us what the rooms would look like, what the finishes look like, what equipment might go into a facility like that. One of the challenges that we face is we've been in this, in this building so long that we don't know what's missing. We've been doing it the same way and working uh, to, to use the tax dollars as wisely as we can that we, we don't know what else should be there that isn't there. So that was why it was so helpful. And then that also, just like you said, just helpful in knowing what you guys need in this new station. And then you went through different sites. What was the initial number of sites you looked at here in Council Bluffs? We reached out to county partners in the uh, County Supervisor's Office, the Sheriff's Office, um, other partners in the, in the community to say, okay, what sites would you recommend? Um, and then I asked our staff to recommend sites. And initially we came up with 10 different sites around the community. And you had different criteria for every site? Uh, we started out working with um, the HWA and the JEO consultants, and they came up with 50 different criteria to evaluate the project or the sites by. And then we sat down as a group and narrowed that down to 31 criteria. So each one of the sites that was selected, the initial 10, were graded on those 31 criteria. And then that group of 10 got boiled down to three uh, main possible sites, and what were those sites? Actually, what happened, Zach, was really interesting. We, uh, in a blind study sort of way, we went out to each one of the sites, mm -hmm. the whole group did. We looked at the site, we compared the, the criteria that we saw there, we went back to uh, an office and discussed that for two hours and sat and went through everything. And what we found was there were three sites that really stood out. And part of that was because they were shovel ready. There wasn't any need to remove existing um, infrastructure or buildings or to buy out um, landowners in the process. And the separation was fairly significant. There were three sites that stood out at the top and the, and the other seven did not because of those criteria. Um, the three that stood out were um, Sap Brothers, is commonly called Sap Brothers. It's down off of the 2300 block of South 24th Street. The second site was the Google property, which is down south of J.C. Penney's and Shopco. Mm -hmm. And then the third one was the Woodbury site. And Woodbury site is the one that the state, you guys have kind of decided on for now? 
We have recommended the Woodbury site as our primary choice for a number of reasons. The criteria that it met, um, and the ironic thing too is what we found in the blind study, the study group of 11 citizens went through the process in a very similar fashion and they came up to the same conclusions. They recommended those three sites as well. Mm -hmm. So what we decided is it wasn't fair to ask them to pick the, the, the site. So we as a, a city team put it together and said, this is the site we're recommending. There are a few reasons it's the top site. It, it um, was in the top three for criteria. The location, um, the infrastructure, the accessibility, all are key factors for that. Uh, one other key factor is that site uh, can be purchased. We have a, an option on the site for a fully refundable $25,000. Mm -hmm. The purchase price for that site is $880,000. For this, the other sites, we don't have um, a price on Google that would have to be negotiated. For Sap Brothers, the price um, online for that property, and it was 9.2 acres or roughly that, was around $9.2 million, significantly higher than Woodbury. What we ran into is we looked at all the criteria and all the sites. My favorite site to begin with was Creek Top, mm -hmm. um, that area between 7th and 8th from Creek Top up to Washington. Relatively more downtown area. Right, and I'd hope to stay downtown, but the challenge is in respect for the taxpayers' investment, the tax dollars, they work so hard, and they have to pay to keep us running, it didn't seem fair. Um, what we found is it costs so much more to, to buy that site, to buy the land, then you'd have to relocate people, then you'd have to deconstruct the area, and that includes not only taking out the basements and the buildings, mm -hmm. but it also means that we would have to move all the infrastructure. And that includes things like uh, power lines, um, gas lines, water, sewer, uh, roads, mm -hmm. everything that's there now, and what we calculated is those costs would be roughly eight to ten million dollars extra over what we can get for Woodbury. Mm -hmm. Woodbury is roughly, I think, um, uh, around forty-eight thousand dollars per acre. If we looked at one of the sites like Creek Top, which is only about five acres or six acres, it came out to closer over a million dollars an acre. Mm. And out of respect for the taxpayers, I wouldn't want to make. I wouldn't want to if I, it was my money. I wouldn't want to choose Creek Top just because of the location when we could save so much more. The second critical part of that is this is a package. Um, everything that we invest in the land comes out of the total $20 million bond. So that means that if we spend eight to $10 million on the land, then we only have $10 million left to do the building. We're talking about a building that's 58,000 square feet. It's roughly scoped at around $15 million. If we take another $5 million out of that off the top, I'm not sure what kind of a facility we're going to have. And one of the key components that we've learned from the team, the architecture and engineering team, is that if we, we have to invest for the future. In other words, we need to make sure that we're using durable surfaces and, and lights that are adaptable, uh, compared, you know, LED compared to fluorescent, things like that. We can go less expensive and build it cheaper but what happens is we pay more for maintenance and the, the facility breaks down sooner. It has to be repaired sooner. So we pay those costs permanently and they continue to go up with time as opposed to if we have uh, more durable finishes and a more durable system, those costs tend to go down and stay down. Uh, perfect example, um, we're looking at a geothermal system for heating and air conditioning. Okay. Geothermal is uh, eco-friendly and on top of that, uh, based on what we learned in the process, that system would literally pay for itself in the first 10 years of life of the building. So it's all for making everything as cost efficient as possible for the long run instead of just in the short term. Right. The normal service life of a building like this is 20 to 25 years. If you stop and look at the building we're in, um, we're there now, this is our 38th year. We've almost doubled the serviceable life of what we should have. In other words, we've stretched that tax dollar as far as we can. The, the challenge we're running into is we now need to move on and the cost now is not gonna get cheaper down the road. No. And that's the other big challenge with an existing site. If we go with an existing site, the, the problem we run into is that uh, we have to wait to construct, to build, while we prepare that land. And every year that's delayed, it go, the construction costs go up six to eight percent. As the election comes up, and maybe some people won't be able to go and vote on that $20 million bond, there are ways to be, still be able to vote, like absentee balloting? Yes, there are. Um, currently, the, the uh, auditor's office has, has prepared absentee ballots. You can pick up an application from the auditor's office, complete that application, and vote right there at the auditor. Or you can uh, pick up an application for an absentee ballot 
mail it in. They will mail the absentee ballot to you, and then all you have to do is mail it back. That way you don't have to worry about being there on May 3rd. And then right now, even though the project has kind of stopped on the step that you're on until that special election, you're still very active with going out and giving uh, educational um, educational presentations. presentations. Yeah. We are. We're trying to make sure that people understand what's going on. Some of the challenges that we've run into is that uh, their concern, there, there appears to be a concern about the location because of a loss of service to a certain area. In other words, if we move it from the downtown area to Woodbury, there's a thought that because we're leaving that area that we would lose service to those citizens, and that's absolutely not true. The fact of the matter is we're not, our service area is not like a fire station in the sense that we have a small geographic area that we serve. No. Our building is the foundation for all our services. And where it's located is important to the city in general, but it's not critical to the response times to calls. In fact, what we found through our research and through the information we've developed is that our services th that we can provide would go up or new ones will be provided with the new facility that we can't provide now. And then before we go, where's a place that someone can get to to get more information about the project? You can go to the city website. Um, you can check out our Facebook page, the police department's Facebook page. Um, if you go to the city website, there's a, a button on the front page of the website. The, if you click on that, it'll take you right to the page. It has videos about the current state, videos of what a modern facility looks like, all the fact sheets, um, a flyer on, that gives you the breakdown on what the costs are. And even if, if you're not satisfied with that information, please call us. We want to make sure that we have the opportunity to answer any questions. Um, reach out to us, and we'd be glad to do that. Chief, thank you for joining us today in studio. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it. As more information on this issue comes available, we'll make sure to keep you up to date here on CBTV 17 with Council Bluffs News or online on YouTube or social media. Once again, thank you for joining us here on CBTV 17.